Justice Bowman, I wanted to ask you about the issue of contemporaneous documentation. Do you believe that at the audit level, do you believe that contemporaneous documentation should be the basis for determining eligibility, or do you believe that the requirement for documentation should only be evidentiary only? In other words, should be purely to support that the activity took place. It should be uh, primarily evidentiary, but I'm not saying that it should that, that a claim for scientific research tax credit should be excluded if there is no contemporary documentation. There should be. It depends on whether or not the uh, uh, the researcher is, is believed. Mm -hmm. You are aware that, uh, and, I, and I know that you are. Uh, the five questions that CRA arms RTAs with, um, they've taken your five questions from Northwest Hydraulics and they've made a slight revision to one of them to say that uh, there's a record of the hypothesis kept as the work takes place, which really has put R RTAs in a position where, you know, they're, they're now, at least in many cases, basing the decision on whether the work is eligible or not on the documentation rather than looking at the documentation as being evidentiary only. Well, I would say that the documentation is the strongest evidence that you have in many cases. So try to have it. But I'm not saying that it's essential that I would reject scientific research claims just because there is no documentation. It depends on whether you believe the, uh, the taxpayer. Chief Justice Bowman, um, CRA has taken the position that trial and error is not eligible for SRD. Is this semantics, or what do you think about this uh, position? Well, I think that's baloney. I don't believe it at all. I think that uh, trial and error is one aspect of the type of research that goes into scientific research. I think what they're attempting to say, and of course, I think what CRA has done is they've taken the term trial and error and they've created their own rendition, their own definition. I don't have any doubt, for example, that Thomas Edison engaged in a lot of trial and error. Undoubtedly. Good analogy. <clears throat> I would suggest that what they're really saying is there's no hypothesis that guided the work. But the term trial and error, and of course in Joel Theatrical, uh, Justice Somerville had mentioned the same subject and said that he didn't know about any jurisprudence that stated clearly that trial and error wasn't eligible. So again, I think... No, I agree with you. Yeah. Would you say there should be more training in this area for CRA officials? They, they shouldn't need training, for goodness sake. They should be able to reach that conclusion on their own. Which includes incremental improvements... Uh, was there to fill a gap, or what was perceived as a gap, in the legislation. Um, in other words, the CRA was, I think, erroneously, taking the position that if it was just, if there was something already invented, but they were improving on it, that was not experiment, uh, scientific development. Um, and I, I think in the definition that I had, I used the word infinitesimal improvements. Yes, you did. And I think that uh, what I meant was to comment on incremental improvements there too. In other words, it didn't have to be a brand new product. It could just be an improved one. Definitely. I think that incremental implies that there be an, an addition or an, a minor improvement even. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine what uh, known techniques would be used, would have been used by um, uh, Thomas Edison when he invented the light bulb. And yet, no one would question that was a uh, breakthrough uh, uh, experimental development. Well, routine engineering, standing by itself without benefit of a statutory definition, is um, uh, it's pretty routine. It's pretty. Um, uh, there's nothing unusual about it. Um, that's why that people disagree over it. 
um, I think it's high time that they looked at the meaning, looked at the definition of routine engineering as including um, aiming at a reason, at least a, uh, a result that is not predictable. You've went on, this is the second part of your explanation about routine engineering, and you've described it this way. Briefly, it describes techniques, procedures, and data that are generally accessible to a competent professional in his field. Yeah. Seems to me that the underlying meaning of your decision would have required a great deal of thought in coming up with that. I don't remember whether I did any thinking or not, <laughs> but I can assure you, I, yes, I did. Yeah. Um, and uh, remember that routine, I mean, was to, uh, intended to include techniques, procedures, and data. In other words, methods and information. What's interesting is when we see a decision coming down from CRA that says the work was not qualified because standard procedures were used to resolve the problem, what part of that, of your decision, do you think they might be ignoring? Well, they did not give sufficient, in my view, sufficient effect to reasonably predictable. Uh, I think that um, if there's reasonable predictability, the fact that only routine engineering is, is utilized in reaching that conclusion, I do not think disqualifies the scientific research. Do you, do you believe that the, the entire question of eligibility not only is, is based upon uh, developing techniques that didn't exist, but perhaps choosing from existing techniques. Could it be that there are three or four or more techniques that are known, but without experimenting with them and seeing how they affect each other, would you say that that would constitute a legitimate uncertainty? Oh, I should think so, yes. Why not? You don't know the result that you're you, you may use routine engineering procedures, but you don't really know what result you're going to get. One of the points that we have made is, is that the definition for routine engineering must be supported by what would be akin to the proverbial three-legged stool. You have techniques, procedures, and data. And without these three, without these three supporting legs, the stool would topple, would it? Yes, because the, the third leg is an integral part of the stool. the vast majority of situations where CRA ha ha is taking a position to deny a claim because of the fact that they're simply clinging to techniques and procedures. I'm not saying 100% of the time, but if they're not taking the time to consider whether or not the specific knowledge that's been gained by a taxpayer was generally accessible and they're only looking at techniques and procedures, I would suggest that there is some misinterpretation of, of your decision. Yes. How do you feel about your decision being misinterpreted by the CRA? <laughs> Over 17 years of being a judge, I am not surprised at seeing my decision sometimes being misinterpreted. What I'd like to do is go to your reasons for your judgment here where it says, another very astute observation, and you say, what may appear routine and obvious after the event may not have been before the work was undertaken. Yes, that's what I said, and, and what I meant there, I think it was obvious, is that it may not have been obvious after the, um, or at least before the uh, uh, scientific research was undertaken, uh, but um, it may not have been that obvious before the work was taken. If a company performs experimental work that results in knowledge that's not generally available, that would be constituted as an advancement? Yes, I think so. 